So that was crazy. I went to the vehicle to grab my underwater camera so that I could get a shot of the release of the minnows. And I come back and the bag is like moving around. And I'm thinking, well, the minnows are too small to move the bag. So what's going on? And the smallmouth bass was chewing on the bag, trying to get into the minnows. Uh, just totally crazy. But anyway, I went, put the camera in, stood back for maybe three minutes and uh, I could see it, the, the bass come back and it just hammered the bag. So that should be a really cool video um, if I got it. I think I did. But anyway, I can slow that down and uh, we'll get a good look at the biggest bass in the pond. So he's definitely doing some eating and growing. That's the original smallmouth uh, that I threw in from a minnow trap two summers ago coming up. So it's almost two years old. Uh, it's sitting under the log right now. I don't think you can see it, but it's right there looking for the minnows. So that's probably a uh, waste of $8 in minnows because they're going to get chewed up. I wish they were a little bigger. These are definitely eatable size, so they might be in trouble, but whatever. I went in, that's all they had, so grabbed a couple dozen and I'll throw them in the pond now. Let them get climatized. I'm going to take these minnows now. I'm going to maybe release them into that Christmas tree over there so that they have a little bit of shelter. They can get their bearings because they're going to uh, they're going to need to be able to swim to get away from that bass because it's going to be all over them. Okay, so I moved over here. I think the smallmouth is over there under that log. Uh, I've got our old Christmas tree from this past December floating around here. I'm going to sink this very soon in, in uh, the next part of the video. But anyway, I'm going to let these minnows go and that, that fish bit a hole in the bag because I carried them over and there's some tooth damage, a couple strikes. Uh, that's so cool. I did not expect to get that on camera. But anyway, I'm going to let these minnows go. Hopefully they swim into that Christmas tree. I'm sure that fish will be over here now that it hears some commotion. So remember those Christmas trees that we threw in last winter? Well, they didn't sink, they floated around. They kept blowing end for end, which was actually good. It was, it was like a broom that kept cleaning the surface, but they finally uh, just landed in a corner. It's, I'm gonna move them because we actually have an excavator on site doing a little bit of other work. And I'm gonna maybe dig this corner of the pond out that I always thought I should have done originally. So here's the trees here and you can see frogs use them. There's minnows in there I can see. There's the old Christmas tree. There's a giant bullfrog sitting in there. These bullfrogs are so tame here. It's getting colder, so they're moving slower, but I cannot get this frog out of the tree. That's not a tree frog. That's just a large bullfrog that does not want to get out of this tree. He's in the Christmas tree that I want to move. Would you jump? Come on, go, 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 go. There he goes. You can see the minnows coming out. So much life in these trees. Get out of there. Get. Get out of there. Come on. Get out of the tree. It was surprising how many minnows and fish were, were in the trees all year. They're just a magnet for bait and for the fish, so I was shocked. Everybody said throw trees in and they were totally right. It's uh, unbelievable. There's a rock bass and lots of pumpkin seed sunfish. They're always in the trees. And here's that smallmouth bass from the opening sequence of this video and it always uses the trees to look for unsuspecting minnows. More rock bass hanging out at the trees. More sunfish and on a side note they have really nice color, they look good and healthy. And the smallmouth bass again, these predator fish use the tree a lot as uh, shelter and also as an ambush uh, feature as they hunt for the minnows and, and bait fish.
when this pond was first dug on that opening pond dig video that we did I always felt this corner of the pond wasn't quite dug out enough so with an excavator close by it was a great time to come and take out a lot of buckets of uh, fill add some depth to the pond here and really push that corner back further The digging looked a lot better. It really filled out that end of the pond, pushed it a little bit wider, and uh, I'm quite happy with this design going forward. This will be the last time the pond gets dug out to that extent. That changes the shape of the pond pretty quick. Uh, quite a few bucket loads came out of uh, that. Got some depth to the pond, definitely added some length in this corner that was always a little bit short. Much more rocky on this end of the pond. This is the material that came out. A nice river rock, granite mostly, some limestone too in it. It will be nice if this ends more gravelly. Um, it looks like it's going to be. It'll take a long time for this silt to settle out of the water. Um, but when it does, it'll be interesting to see how the bottom looks. It'll be nice to add some gravel to the pond as the other three sides are really just sand. So this one looks like a little rougher, a little bit more structure, which will be nice for uh, the fish and minnows. Another sure sign of spring is uh, the tadpoles are out. Frog spawn, whatever you want to call it. There's a million, well, maybe not a million, there's a thousand little tadpoles here along the shore. We seem to get them every spring. Are those your kids? Not gonna answer that question. They usually don't amount to much see small frogs around the pond at the end of the year but I think most of these get eaten by fish. Well we've warmed up now the water's warmed up and the sunfish are starting to sit on their nests they're in very shallow water these these fish are in maybe five six inches of water so I'm hoping the river doesn't move down to pull this water level down and this sunfish I like if you watch them it's like a bad drug trip it's uh look at how paranoid he is he's just all over the place darting around looking at everything anything that moves he's on it and uh, it doesn't trust anybody. It's like, get away from this nest. It's, it's completely insane that they can keep this up for this long, for days on end, for almost two weeks. Uh, you look at these little minnows sneak in and they know exactly what they're doing. He knows what they're trying to do too and uh, trying to get rid of them. And then the one kind of takes his attention off to the side. And then you can see here is the one sneaks in, grabs something and they're gone. They know exactly what they did. The only time you really see them slow down is when a, a female comes in. So a lady comes over and he finally calms down. And you know, they do a couple circles here and he looks all calm and normal and happy. And uh, all of a sudden she's gone and he's back to his paranoid state. It's, it's crazy how, how much energy these male sunfish uh, have to put out to guard the nest. It looks like uh, just a terrible 10, 12 days uh, of guarding eggs on a, on a nest. It, it's crazy how much energy they put out. He's completely paranoid the whole time. It's been about a month since the excavator dug the pond a little bit deeper on that end. It's actually a lot longer. Uh, that entire back corner was taken out. Um, so I like the length of it. Looks good now for uh, A, pond size. I always You always want more volume. And uh, B, it's a nice shape of uh, for a rink for skating up here in, in the winter. We can skate on this pond. We get lots of, uh, lots of ice. So that's kind of the uh, plan. It's a good sized rink for the kids to skate on for, for many years, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, the water's still a little bit murky from that dig. Not a bad day with the sun out to try and see if we can uh, see deep down. So we are well into the fall season here. Uh, it's getting cold. There's gonna be ice soon, believe it or not. It's a beautiful day today, but Ice is going to be coming here soon. I want to see if I can uh, get some video from the bottom of the pond out in the middle. So I'm going to try to rig up this GoPro housing to a bobber. This is kind of a bit of guesswork to see if I can get maybe six to seven feet down, which would get us a foot or so off bottom and, and see what's happening down there. I want to send this down, GoPro bobber, um, kind of, a MacGyver rig here, but we'll see if we can get anything uh, decent for, for video. The water's cleared somewhat. There's no ice yet and the sun's out, so I'm going to try to uh, get this camera down close to the bottom and maybe we see something, maybe we don't.
So that video turned out pretty good. Actually, the old bobber and GoPro trick, uh, the wind actually blows the bobber around on the surface. So it uh, almost makes it look like the, the camera is being moved uh, purposefully, but it was just blowing around in the wind. So I'm happy with that. It's always cool to see the bottom of this pond. It's a very sand-based pond, so you don't see a lot of mud, a lot of vegetation, but uh, I kind of like that in a sense because it's not gonna grow up too thick and, uh, and too heavy. The video looks so well, I'm actually going to cast the bobber out again on the far end of the pond, which I've never looked at underwater before. It'll be cool to see that underwater and see if there is more structure and uh, just a different habitat on the, the bottom of the pond. Going forward for next year, that'll be a bigger year. This year was kind of just a bit of a pause and, and to try and really get the bait set up in here. Threw a lot of minnows in, threw a lot of fish in here. The uh, sunfish spawned. There's quite a bit of small bait in here. So that was always the plan this year. Next year will be the fun one. Um, really get the fish in, the, a couple big bass is what I want. Uh, hopefully we get more and more spawning next year. Uh, a few more minnows and mostly some structure. I have to get some more structure in here. I've kind of been slacking on that, but there's not a lot of predator fish, so I can kind of get away with it. But there's a lot of, we're on the river here, so there's a lot of deadheads, uh, logs, rocks, more Christmas trees and stuff like that I'm gonna get in here next spring. We're fortunate to have a fairly big piece of property here, so the pond was always number one to do. Um, and then the bigger part of the picture was to do a backyard golf course, which sounds crazy um, but it'll be a very budget friendly backyard golf course little two hole course maybe 110 yards long two greens i'll try to do uh, started to do video on that so that is sort of what the pond is for um, the fish and the kids in the pond and all that but also uh, just a centerpiece to a little clean backyard golf course we've been here now uh, working on it for a year or two and uh, it'll be really nice to get rid of all this sand and weeds and rock and uh, to finally bring in some topsoil do the irrigation get it graded see some green growth would be really nice it's sort of a sandy desert like uh, feeling here so next year will be a huge year for that um, the pond is pretty well set I've got it dug to where I want it I like the size I just have to start working from the banks from the shoreline out and then get into the landscaped uh, golf course if you want to call it that or lawn so that's that's the next thing and uh, that'll be next spring thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it